channel so I hope everybody is doing great so right now I'm standing in my backyard it's a beautiful gorgeous warm day today so finally summer is in full swing so in summer I love uh, outdoor cooking I do a lot of grilling on my grill and also whenever I cook fish curry or fish fry I try to do it um, on my outdoor grill uh, so I'm gonna show it to you guys uh, this is going to be a vlog I'm gonna make a few dishes for my lunch so gonna show it to you guys so it's going to be Kerala style dishes so I'm planning to make Kerala style fish curry in the clay pot yes I'm gonna use clay pot for making the fish curry so in South India um, and um, Kerala and also uh, in Sri Lanka most of the dishes traditional dishes are made in a clay pot um, and uh, whatever that's made in clay pot tastes super delicious I wish I can use clay pot for my cooking every day but uh, unfortunately it's not feasible to cook in clay pot during winter especially when I'm you know cooking indoor uh, so in summer I try to make uh, some of the dishes in the clay pot especially fish curry tastes really delicious uh, when you cook it in the clay pot um, so I'll be using salmon that's the only fish I got um, uh, during my last uh, online grocery shopping so I'll use that for making the fish curry also have some kale leaves so I'm planning to make kale leaves and coconut stir fry it's the Kerala style toren um, and I'll be also making rasam. So rasam is a South Indian style uh, soup. It's more like a watery dish. Um, it's very tangy, uh, spicy. It has all kind of flavors in it and it will um, definitely excite our taste buds. I also have slight cold and sinus allergy today. So the rasam soup is perfect. Uh, it will open up my senses and it's great uh, for when you're, you know, down when you have a cold or headache so I'm gonna make that um, I so I'll be serving all these dishes along with rice um, so I'll be cooking Sona Masuri uh, rice uh, it's a white rice uh, so guys uh, let's get started and I hope you all enjoy this vlog check it out first I'm going to cook rice for that I have uh, placed a saucepan and I have added some water to it so next uh, I'm going to season with uh, half teaspoon salt so I have uh, placed this over medium heat so let the water come to a slight boil and then I'm going to add the rice I'm adding two cups rice so this is Sona Masuri rice you can add any kind of uh, white rice um, I have rinsed the rice well under running water so let the rice cook for 15 minutes and let it turn soft so after 15 minutes the rice has turned uh, soft this has cooked perfectly so I'm going to remove the pan from the heat and drain the water and keep the rice aside for making fish curry I'll be using salmon so here is a salmon steak and it has skin on it so I'm going to remove the skin the skin has a lot of scales um, so it's going to take a while to clean it up. So I'm just going to remove it. So using a sharp knife just pull the skin and it will come off easily. You can use any kind of fish uh, you would like. If you have like palm fret, kingfish or even sardines will work well. I'm going to gently pull off the skin. So the skin is off. And there's some more flesh there so I'm going to um, you know, remove that also because I want to take all the flesh out of the skin so that's the salmon skin next I'm going to dice the salmon steak so it's a medium-sized chunk So next I'm going to rinse the salmon under running water. So I'm going to add some salt to it and then rinse it really well under running water. So before starting to make the fish curry, I'm going to soak fresh tamarind in water. So I'm going to take two inches slice fresh tamarind add to a bowl add half cup lukewarm water 
and I'm going to soak the tamarind in water. So let it soak for 15 to 20 minutes. So next, let's make fish curry. Here's my grill. I'm going to turn it on. So here's the burner that I have. So I'm going to turn it on. the burner so it's not a windy day so, so today is a perfect day for outdoor cooking so here is the clay pot I'm going to place it with the flame so let the clay pot so I have washed uh, the clay pot really well so this is the clay pot I got it from Kerala during my last visit every time I go there I get um, or I literally steal one of my mom's um, clay pot so that will be seasoned well if you're getting a new clay pot you need to season it well there's some few things that you have to do um, so since my mom was using this one it was well seasoned and then after I came here you know I just I just greatly cooked everything uh, on this one so I use this mostly for cooking fish curries so let the pan turn hot and then we'll add oil and then start our cooking I'm so excited so this is the first time I'm cooking uh, in the clay pot uh, this summer uh, so every summer I try to make fish curry in the clay pot okay so the clay pot has turned hot so next I'm going to add coconut oil two tablespoons so let it melt so for making Kerala style fish curries you have to add coconut oil that's when you get the aroma and flavor so next goes in mustard seeds so as soon as the oil turns hot add mustard seeds one teaspoon so the mustard seeds have to splutter I really enjoy the spluttering sound of mustard seeds as you can hear all right this is fun so next goes in dried whole red chilies and curry leaves so now the aroma of mustard seeds curry leaves and dried red chilies oh my god it's so mesmerizing i really love this uh, aroma all right so saute for a few seconds that's it and next i'm going to add uh, chopped ginger and garlic so saute well let the ginger garlic turn light golden do not burn them so for making kerala dishes you have to add uh, curry leaves it's a must add curry leaves impart so much aroma and flavor uh, to Kerala dishes and in Kerala you know every house has a uh, curry leaf plant I wish I had a um, curry leaf plant over here I don't have one so what they do is they just pick it from the fresh from the plant and then add it to the uh, their cooking so next I'm going to add shallots if you have small onion or pearl onions you can add that so this is three shallots sliced so adding half teaspoon salt so this will help to cook the shallots well so the moisture from the onion or shallots will will be released after you add salt the shallots turn light golden in color that's when the curry will taste good next let's add chopped tomatoes I've taken one chopped tomato so cook till the tomatoes get mashed up so it's going to take a few minutes so there are different ways of making Kerala style fish curry so this is one one of the ways uh, where I'm adding uh, everything as whole as you, as you have seen I've added uh, shallots tomatoes uh, ginger garlic everything is added as whole but another way is you can make a paste out of it and then cook that paste and make into a gravy and then add the fish and cook the fish in it uh, uh, there are other ways as well uh, where we use um, roasted coconut um, and make a paste out of it and cook in it so so many several different ways of making fish curry 
so this is looking good so everything has cooked well so next i'm going to add all the aromatic starting with a chili powder so this is one teaspoon regular chili powder so this is really spicy hot so you can add according to your spice level so next i'm adding cashmere chili powder so this gives a nice vibrant red color it's not that hot so next goes in turmeric powder you, you should only add a little bit like a few pinches so coriander powder so that's like uh, one tablespoon so coriander powder gives a nice uh, aroma and flavor so don't skip adding coriander powder next i'm adding half teaspoon cumin powder usually cumin is not added in fish curries but it will give that smoky flavor so i'm adding it if you don't like the flavor of cumin you can skip that and one teaspoon salt give everything a good mix and let the spices cook for a couple of minutes but make sure not to burn the spices otherwise it will have a burnt taste so next let's add tamarind extract so this is the tamarind that i soaked in water um, so i squeezed it well in water and um, extracted all the juice so strain it and add the juice so i'm going to mix this well now let's add one cup this is slightly warm water so now you can also give a taste if you need more uh, salt or chili powder for spice to make it more spicy you can add that mm, tastes perfect now if you're a vegetarian you know at this point you can add um, some kind of vegetables like okra or eggplant um, so so this is a really nice gravy very aromatic flavorful spicy and um, tangy um, so I'll be adding fish but uh, you can add um, other kind of vegetables also okay so let the gravy come to a slight boil and that's when I'm going to add the fish since we have added Kashmiri chili powder, that's what is giving that uh, vibrant red color. So that's very mild. Um, and for more heat, uh, you have to also add the regular chili powder. So add it according to your spice level. I only added one teaspoon. I don't like too much, um, not me, my hubs, he doesn't like um, too much spicy food. All right, so now it's uh, time to add the fish. So I'm adding salmon so I have cut into small pieces you can literally add any kind of fish like palm fret kingfish so I've also removed the skin from the fish I don't like the taste of um, salmon skin um, so I removed that So now I'm going to cover the clay pan and cook it for a few minutes till the fish has cooked well. So cover with a lid and let it cook for I would say 10 minutes and don't keep stirring the fish can fall apart so let it cook in the gravy. So let's find out what's going on with the fish curry. Yes it's coming along great. So fish you don't have to cook for long so i will cook for a couple more minutes towards the end i'm going to add half teaspoon of coarsely ground fenugreek seeds my mom always adds this to the fish curry so i am also adding it actually this gives a a nice um, aroma and flavor you know if you know the uh, taste and aroma of fenugreek seeds you know it so that's what makes it that fish curry taste and finally goes in one teaspoon coconut oil so after adding coconut oil that's it we are done um, cover the clay pot with a lid and uh, remove it from the heat and let it stand or let it rest for a few minutes um, let all the flavor get into the fish and the gravy <coughs> 
so if you have some fresh curry leaves you can also add that at this point i i'm out of fresh curry leaves right now so i'm not adding it but i've already added fresh curry leaves to the oil that's it so now close with the lid turn off the flame and i'm going to let it rest for a few minutes before serving so next let's make kale leaves thorin or kale leaves uh, and coconut stir fry uh, so i have uh, placed a non-stick pan over medium heat so it has turned hot so adding one tablespoon coconut oil so the oil has turned hot so i'm adding one teaspoon mustard seeds so let it splutter it's a splutter adding one tablespoon chana dal so this is optional and half tablespoon urad dal so saute so next adding whole dried red chilies so i'm out of uh, curry leaves if you have curry leaves add that right now and then adding one chopped onion adding one teaspoon salt one tablespoon chopped garlic so here are the kale leaves chopped kale leaves add these so next adding half cup water so adding two green chilies let it cook for a few minutes till the kale leaves have wilted and almost cooked we don't have to overcook that so this has cooked well let's add half teaspoon turmeric powder so this is the only spice i'm going to add so if you want you can add other spices like coriander powder chili powder uh, even ground cumin but i'm not going to add those i wanted to enjoy the taste of kale leaves in this next goes in one cup grated coconut some more salt so now we can increase the heat and cook uh, stir fry till coconut turns uh, golden in color that's when the the stir fry will taste good so this looks perfect so remove the pan from the heat and keep it covered for some time for making rasam, I'm going to pick fresh uh, cilantro and mint leaves from my garden. Uh, so I have lots of uh, herbs here. This, these are the mint, basil and uh, cilantro here. So let me pick some leaves from here. So if you have um, mint, basil and cilantro in your garden, keep pruning them. That's when they grow uh, bushy and healthy. All right. So mint leaves, you just have to cut these leaves like this so in summer this is what I do I pick herbs from my garden and add it to my cooking such a joy oh my god all right so these are so this is good enough let me pick some cilantro so even cilantro I keep uh, picking the leaves that's when they grow well For making rasam, I'm going to grind garlic and ginger. So I've taken three cloves fresh garlic, two inch sliced ginger, and I will be also adding half teaspoon cumin seeds. So I'm going to eyeball it, half teaspoon, and then half teaspoon whole peppercorns. Okay, so I'm going to coarsely grind these I have placed a saucepan over medium heat it has turned hot adding one tablespoon coconut oil when I take coconut oil I always apply some to my hand um, my hands are super dry uh, so and coconut oil is the perfect moisturizer you can also apply to your uh, legs if you have dry legs the oil has turned hot, so adding half teaspoon mustard seeds. Let it splutter. And to this, I'm going to add the ground garlic, ginger, cumin seeds, and uh, whole peppercorns. 
also saute well and make sure not to brown these it will brown really fast so to this adding shallots or small onions half teaspoon salt so next i'm adding two tomato stock I have rinsed the blender jar with some water, like um, quarter cup water, add that. Okay, so now we can cook the tomatoes and shallots. So let it turn mashed up, let the tomatoes get mashed up. Let's add fresh mint leaves and cilantro. So I've already soaked some tamarind two inch slices tamarind in a half cup warm water so it's been like 15 minutes so it has soaked really well so now I'm going to squeeze the tamarind skin into the water this will help to extract the tamarind juice and then I'll strain it and add to the rasam so strain the tamarind juice So rasam needs good amount of salt so I just give a taste I have to add half teaspoon more salt so I'm going to add some more water like half cup so total I have added uh, one and quarter cups water so cover with a lid and cook for like 10 minutes so let it simmer so that's when all the aromas will get into the water so let's see how the rasam is coming along. So opening the lid. So as I open the lid, uh, I can smell the aroma of mint leaves, cilantro, whole peppercorns, tamarind, cumin seeds. Oh, it smells amazing right now. So I want the tomatoes to be mashed up. So I'm gonna cook for five more minutes over medium low heat. The rasam has cooked well, so I'm going to remove the pan from the heat. So keep it covered for some time after you remove the saucepan from the heat. So let it rest for some time. Next, I'm going to make a quick gooseberry pickle. So I have some gooseberries here. So these are frozen gooseberries. I got this from the Indian store. So if you go to the Indian store, you will find gooseberries in the frozen aisle. Um, so I have um, thawed these gooseberries, so next I'm going to uh, chop them. So there is a huge seed at the center, so I'm going to remove the seed and just use the flesh. Here are the chopped gooseberries. This is around two cups. Next, I'm going to add all the spices. This is Kashmiri chili powder, two teaspoon. Regular spicy chili powder, two teaspoon. Half teaspoon ground cumin. Quarter teaspoon turmeric powder. One and a half teaspoon salt. Combine everything well and let it marinate for an hour. I'm going to make the gooseberry pickle on my outdoor burner. So I've placed a clay pan. So this is the clay pan I use for making otapam or it's, it's like a rice crepe, um, very popular in um, uh, South India. So the pan has turned hot, so I'm going to add sesame oil, I'm going to add around 3 tablespoons. Right. So sesame oil has lots of flavor and aroma. If you don't have sesame oil, you can add vegetable oil. So I'm going to add mustard seeds, half tablespoon. So let the mustard seeds splutter. Okay, 
So next I'm going to add fenugreek seeds. This is half tablespoon. So saute and let it turn light golden. Do not burn them. Cumin seeds. That's like one teaspoon. So next adding whole dried red chilies. So frying this beautiful aroma is coming out of this. So next let's add two tablespoons chopped garlic. If you want you can add more garlic. Okay, so let the garlic turn light golden. So we need to ensure not to burn any of these and i have my marinated gooseberries ready here so for making this gooseberry pickle i did not steam cook the gooseberries um, in some pickle recipes you know they steam cook the gooseberries and then they add it um, that's not required so this one i'm using raw gooseberries it's getting windy here so to this Let's add the marinated gooseberries. If you are making this pickle indoors, you need to turn on the exhaust to high. As we have added all the dry spices, uh, the smell that's coming out of this really intense from the Kashmiri chili powder and also the chili powder. So let it cook for like five minutes. Next, I'm going to add white so here is the pure white vinegar, 4 tablespoons. When we, as soon as we add vinegar, it smells like pickle. So give a taste. So it has good amount of salt. So again, if you want to add more salt, more chili powder, more oil, more vinegar, you can add that. So this is good. I'm going to turn off the heat and keep it covered for some time. I have a beautiful pickle jar here. So this one I bought it from Kerala. So I'm going to add the gooseberry pickle into the jar and um, make sure the pickle jar or whatever jar that you're using is dry. and dropping Dang. Here is the Kerala style lunch. So I've placed everything on the table. So let me show it to you guys. So here is the Sona Masiri rice or white rice. So I placed the rice in a clay pan. And here is the fish curry that's made in the clay pot. Also I've used salmon for making this. I'm gonna keep it covered. And here is the kale leaves thorn, or kale leaves and coconut stir fry. Very super healthy, nutritious, and kale is super food. And this is rasam, so this is the spicy, tangy, um, kind of like a soup. Uh, in South India, we add this to the rice and we enjoy it. And this is the um, gooseberry pickle. So here is my plate. So this is a clay pan. This is actually used for making otapam in Kerala or South India. So I've placed banana leaf over it. Now I'm going to serve everything on the banana leaf. So I'm going to serve first rice. A few couple of scoops of rice over the banana leaf. So this is the fish curry. So after you make the fish curry, it has to be kept for some time, keep it covered. So that's when the gravy will thicken. So on top of it, I need one more fish. So you can add any kind of fish that you would like. I've added salmon. Okay. So next some K 
kale leaves thorn. There we go. And next, I'm going to pour the resin and also place gooseberry pickle. So here's the resin. You can enjoy this as a soup, but if you have fish curry, resin and fish curry goes really well. So just pour it over the rice and then you can mix it with the fish curry and the fish and enjoy it. So some gooseberry pickle here on the side. Wow! That is awesome guys! Here is my Kerala style lunch and this is the most healthiest meal. Um, so it has rice, uh, fish, kale leaves, superfood, gooseberry pickle and rasam. Here is the delicious Kerala style lunch. So I have rice, spicy fish curry, kale leaves and coconut thorn, gooseberry pickle and rasam. So this is very healthy and also tastes delicious. Uh, so if you go to Kerala, this is the kind of food you will find and uh, people over there enjoy this kind of food for lunch. Um, so if they are vegetarians, obviously they have other vegetarian dishes and options. So non-vegetarians in Kerala tend to enjoy um, seafood and fish on a daily basis and uh, we get fresh and uh, catch of the day fish almost every day. So while growing up in Kerala, I used to enjoy this kind of food um, cooked by my mom. It's homemade and fresh, tasted absolutely delicious and I truly miss that. Uh, so here in summer, I try to cook uh, fish curries and fish fry uh, outdoor on my grill. Um, and uh, over the weekend, I try to make Kerala style lunch. Um, this is really healthy and you get to enjoy a vari variety of dishes, vegetarian and non-vegetarian. Um, so when I make these kind of dishes, I uh, eat more than usual. So that's what I'm going to do right now. So let me go ahead and enjoy it. I cannot wait it. So guys, um, if you have enjoyed this vlog, uh, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'll be back with more videos. Until then, happy cooking, take care and bye.